Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous Patreons, my British Rail Critics, and my Underwater Train Finders, Thomas Ward and Lord Captain Von Thrust III. You are the reason why this content remains steamy. Yeah, that's not inaccurate. And today, we are going to discuss another underwater something. It's not actually a locomotive this time. It is a steam shovel. This is the story of the steam shovel of Wixom Lake. Now to begin with, what in the blue heck is a steam shovel? Well, it's actually quite simple. You know modern excavators? The things with the arms and the buckets and they dig holes? Yeah, well, a steam shovel was basically that before diesel power was popular. These old school shovels would run off of steam boilers, and for their era, they were revolutionary. Quite useful for construction and earth moving purposes. And one, specifically a Type O Thu model steam shovel, found its way to the bottom of Wixon Lake. Now what is Wixon Lake? Well, Wixon Lake was a reservoir in the U.S. state of Michigan, created due to the Edenville Dam in 1925. The shovel was apparently used to build the dam, and when it was finished, they just kind of left the shovel behind. Whether by accident, or because they just didn't need it anymore, it's unclear. But the shovel was abandoned and left to sink beneath the rising water, and that's where it stayed. Now, over time, people were aware of the steam shovel's existence. They knew it was down there, but no one really had the means or the will to bring it back up. The lake had a maximum depth of 40 feet, so it wasn't, like, violently deep, but it was deep enough to be annoying, and steam shovels are super heavy, so getting it out of there would have been very expensive. A gentleman by the name of Mike Oberlier? Lore? Goodness, I hope I'm saying your name right. I apologize if I'm not. Became fascinated with the shovel, and really wanted to get it out of there. And the shovel is special because it is one of only two typos still left in existence. The other one, which is owned by Bob Kelly, who lives in Pennsylvania, is actually operable. But that would mean that the one on the bottom of the lake is one of only two of these historical objects. So Mike really wanted to get it, but like I said, didn't know how. His father, Bill, was also aware of the shovel, but never had a chance to get it out of there. Mike wanted to carry on his father's legacy in that regard, and he would finally get his opportunity in 2020. See, I keep saying that Wixom Lake was a reservoir, and that is because on May 19th, 2020, heavy rains caused the eastern side of Edenville Dam to collapse. 10,000 locals had to be evacuated, but fortunately no one was hurt. The failure is kind of a mess, and actually the subject of three class action lawsuits, but the silver lining for Mike was that suddenly the lake that had been in the way for the last 95 years was gone. Just not there. And there was the steam shovel. Slightly buried, but uh, right there. So on October 24th, 2020, Mike seized his chance. And utilizing modern equipment, they were able to dig the typo out of the lake bed in a handful of pieces and take it off to the Midland Antique Engine Association, where it's going to be restored. I also find it a little amusing that a modern diesel shovel was used to get a steam shovel out of the ground. And like I said, this typo, once finished, will be one of only two left in the world. And it's a tremendous victory for fans of steam technology. And frankly, I very rarely get a chance to talk about a thing underwater that is no longer underwater. I mean, consider it, how often has it happened where I can say, yeah, it was down there, but now it's not. I think I've only talked about one once before with those New Zealand locomotives, and now we have the Typo, brought back into the light of day once again, and hopefully over the next few years, will be restored for everyone to enjoy. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.